Hi, it's Chris from Mode, and today I'm going to show you how to build your brand new Mode Loop TKL. The Loop is the next generation of the 10 keyless form factor from Mode, featuring a new split ring design joining the top and bottom halves together, looping around the periphery of the board for a subtle and elegant accent. An accent strip across the forehead of the board and a solid weight mounted underneath the board round out the refined accents. We do also have a written build guide with helpful photos if that's more your speed that you can also find linked below. The loop ships in a nice carrying case containing everything that you need for the build. Inside the case, you'll find the keyboard chassis, pre-assembled with the top case, bottom case, and ring. The weight and accent piece will be packaged separately in their own respective boxes. You'll also find the fastener pack, daughter board and daughter board cable, rubber parts pack, which includes the front feet and disc feet, a pack of lattice blocks with all four variations, a screwdriver and keycap puller, a PCB, and plate. Refer to this image on screen to ensure that you have all the necessary fasteners. If you opted for the optional foam kit, you'll have a separate packet containing your PE foam, case foam, and plate foam. In addition to these components, you'll also want to make sure that you have your MX style switches, keycaps, and stabilizers ready, all of which you can find on the Moat website. To prepare for your build, we highly suggest lubing your switches and stabilizers for optimal typing sound and feel. We have a great guide on how to best lube and tune your stabilizers that we'll also leave linked in the description down below. We also highly recommend that you test your PCB, regardless of if it is a hot swap or solder, prior to building your board. We can't guarantee a replacement PCB that was not tested prior to assembly. To do this, place the PCB face down either on a soft surface or preferably on the anti-static sleeve your PCB arrives in, and connect the daughter board to your PCB. Plug the daughter board into your computer. On your browser, head to useVIA.app. Under the Configure tab, click on Authorized Device and Confirm Authorization. This is where you can also change the layout, key bindings, and even the lighting of your PCB, but we'll come back to this later. Then, navigate to the Key Tester tab and enable Test Matrix Mode. Using a pair of tweezers, you'll want to connect the metal contacts under each switch position and make sure that it lights up in VIA. Note that the function key may not light up in VIA during testing, and this is normal. This process is the same on both a hot swap and solder PCB. In the rare event that some keys do not light up, pause your build and contact support at modedesigns.com for help. Once you've confirmed that your PCB is fully functional, you can move on to the next step. With the back of the board facing up, use the H2.5 bit to remove the two uppercase fasteners and the H2 bit to remove the two lowercase fasteners for a total of four fasteners. The ring will come pre-assembled to the loop bottom case when you receive your board from Mode, but in the case that you need to disassemble the ring from the bottom case, you can do so by using the H1.3 bit to remove the six flathead screws around the outside of the board. Set aside the top case and the bottom case which will have the ring attached. Connect the daughter board cable to the daughter board itself. Take note that the orientation of the cable should align with the port. Be sure to insert this completely straight so as to not bend any of the pins. The visible metal pins on the JST cable connector should face downwards. If you do end up bending any pins, you can remove the cable and gently straighten the pins using thin tweezers. Next, you can grab the weight from the weight box. We'll now install the weight to the bottom case. Grab the loop TKL weight with the inside face of the weight facing upwards. With the USB-C port facing upwards, fasten the daughter board to the weight using four of the M2x3 socket head cap screws. Be careful not to over tighten or you may damage the daughter board case or weight. You can use just a bit without the screwdriver handle to tighten. Now, grab your bottom case with the ring still attached. Place it face down on a soft surface. Grab the weight and flip it so the daughter board is facing downwards. Align the left edge of the weight with the recess on the bottom case. Gently lower the right edge of the weight into the recess and screw in the weight with the two M2.5x5 socket head cap screws. Set this aside and now we'll work on the main internal assembly. The internal assembly is the brain of your keyboard. It's what allows your keyboard to actually function as a keyboard. This assembly is primarily what will determine how your board will both sound and feel. First, you'll want to have your PCB ready, which has been confirmed, tested, and working prior to assembly. You'll also want to have your chosen plate material, your optional foam kit, a 90 pack of switches, preferably pre-lubed, and a set of stabilizers, also preferably pre-lubed, all ready to go. We recommend using a fabric sleeve or the anti-static bubble wrap that your PCB arrives in to rest your PCB on during this assembly. If you plan to use the optional PE foam sheet, lay it on top of your PCB now in this orientation. The foam kit for the Loop TKL is sold separately and contains PE foam, plate foam, and case foam. Now install your stabilizers. These are used for your larger keycaps like Shift, Enter, Backspace, and the Spacebar to prevent rocking on these longer keys. You'll need four 2U stabilizers for Backspace, Enter, Left Shift, and Right Shift, and you will also need either a 6.25U or 7U stabilizer for the spacebar. Before installing anything, you'll first want to choose your layouts. 
The Loop TKL HotSwap PCB supports a 6.25U or 7U spacebar, as well as stepped or regular caps lock, which is mainly just for aesthetic purposes. The Loop TKL solder PCB supports both of these options in addition to split backspace, split left shift, and ISO enter. Now you might be wondering, which layout should you go with? Well, it's mainly purely aesthetic. Using a 6.25U spacebar gives you one extra switch, with each keycap on that bottom row being 1.25 units long. A 7U spacebar uses a 1.5U, 1U, and 1.5U layout on both sides of the spacebar, with one less switch than a 6.25U layout. Certain switches are rotated 180 degrees to support these layouts on the hot swap PCB. You can see a full list of compatible layouts with the Loop TKL HotSwap and Solder PCB on the Mode website. Regardless of the layout you choose, you can configure your board to match your chosen layout in VIA. It is highly recommended to pre-loop your stabilizers to prevent rattling sounds, and we'll leave a great guide linked in the description down below on how to best do that. To install your stabilizers, first you'll want to use the Philips PH1 bit. Then, insert the non-threaded end of the stabilizer into the larger cutout on the PCB, and pivot the threaded end into place. While holding it from the front, screw it into place from the underside of the PCB with your stabilizer's included fasteners. Some optionally also come with some washers that you can choose to use. Now it's time to install your switches. Before installing them, make sure to check that each switch's pins are perfectly straight. If they are bent, you can use tweezers to try and make them straight again. If you also picked up the optional plate foam for a more dampened sound, put it on top of your PCB now. Remove the mylar standoff covers and align your plate on top. Fasten it into place with M2x5 flathead screws. Now you can insert your switches. Regardless of if it is a hot swap or solder PCB, we recommend starting at each corner and carefully distributing your switches to ensure that the plate is seated properly. If you are using a softer plate material like Palm, you'll want to pay extra attention to ensure that each switch is seated completely flat. You can use the tip of your screwdriver while pressing down the switch to carefully pull the plate upwards to ensure the switch snaps properly into the plate. If you have a hot swap PCB, we also suggest bracing the back of the hot swap socket while pushing the switch into place. Be sure the switch is going in perfectly straight. If you have a solder PCB, now is the time to solder up your switches. Make sure each switch is installed correctly. Check your PCB from the side and ensure that all switches are seated completely flat. At this stage, we recommend you reconnect the daughter board and test your PCB again in VIA just to make sure everything is working properly. The Mode Loop TKL comes with four sets of lattice blocks. Full lattice green for the most flexible typing experience, full lattice black for a slightly less flexible feeling, half lattice green for a more rigid feeling, and solid green for the firmest typing experience. You can mix and match these blocks to really fine tune how you want your board to feel. To install them, simply slide the block over the tabs of your plate for a total of 7 blocks. The smaller half of the block should be facing upwards. If you decide to use case foam, install it now by placing it in this orientation within the bottom case. Ensure the daughter board cable is coming through this hole on the plate foam. Next, insert your PCB and plate assembly into the case. To do this, hold the assembly with one hand and use your other hand to attach the daughter board cable to the PCB. Again, taking care to insert it perfectly straight as to not bend the pins within. Gently lower the assembly into the chassis, starting with the bottom edge, followed by the top. The internal assembly should look fairly symmetrical around all edges, and each mounting block should be snugly fit. The top surface of the blocks should be ever so slightly above the surface of the ring. Now you can set aside your bottom case with the internal assembly now installed and grab the top case. Place it flat with the top side of the case facing downwards. Take your accent piece and orient it so that the flat side is facing upwards. This piece can only be installed one way. Install the accent using the two M2x4 flathead screws. Now you can finally combine the two halves together. Place the top case over the bottom case and ring. Once secured properly, there shouldn't be any movement. Make sure that the two halves of the chassis are located properly on the ring. While sandwiching the entire assembly together, flip the board over and install the two M3x16 socket head cap screws. Then screw in the remaining M2.5x12 fasteners. Then take a circular disc foot and align the locating bosses in the recess of the weight and gently push in. It should be flat and raised slightly above the surface of the weight. Gently work your way around the diameter of the foot if it isn't sitting perfectly flat. Now install the other disc foot following the same process. Next, install the bar feet by aligning them with the recess and pushing them in. Start with the leftmost edge for the left foot and the rightmost edge on the right foot, working your way inwards. The left and right bar feet are different from each other and are keyed to specifically fit each of the left and right cavities. Finally, install your keycaps. You can also check for any ticking on your stabilizers and if needed, tune your stabilizers by using a lubricant syringe to inject some Crytox 205G0 into the rear of the housing as needed. 
Be careful not to overdo it and use just a little bit of lube at a time. Again, we'll leave a link to our stabilizer tuning tutorial in the description down below. If you want to modify any key bindings or settings, head to usevia.app on your browser. Plug your board in and accept the prompt to authorize your board. Under the Configure tab, you can remap any of your keys to other functions. For example, if you don't want to use delete page up or page down, you can easily reconfigure these to become media controls like volume up or volume down by clicking on the key and selecting a different function in the VIA options. And that's everything you need to know about your mode loop. We hope you enjoy the board. For any technical questions, order help, or any other inquiries, feel free to join our Discord or email our support team at support at